Word of Life with Rev. Mitzi Gibson is made possible in part by Grace Christian Center, Margaret's Beauty Salon, Holly's AC and Refrigeration, and Harold and Elsie Broussard. Welcome to the World of Life. My name is Mixie Gibson, and I have a very special person today that I want to interview because sometimes we have a lot of good things in the city of Killeen, but we don't know how to represent it in the matter that we don't know what's going on, let's put it this way. Uh, so I have the chief of the fire department of Killeen, Mr. Brank, Brian Brank. Mm -hmm. How are you today? To doing well? Yes, I'm doing very good. How about you? Good. So what I wanted to do is just talk about the Clean Fire Department a little bit <coughs> so the citizens of Killeen know what we do and make them comfortable with all the things, that, the services that we provide in the city of Killeen. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident. I've lived in Killeen 40 years and uh, it's important to me to make sure that we do a really good job for the citizens of Killeen. Um, basically our mission is to make sure we provide good service to everybody each day. And uh, the vision is, of course, to try to be the best department that we can be to serve our citizens in the state of Texas and be the leader in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. um, the values that we try to portray in the fire department is professionalism, integrity, and honor. That's what we portray as leaders with our people that are inside the department. We want our, our citizens to be treated that way. Uh, we want to make sure we're trained well, that we serve the citizens the best way we can. Of course, our job is to put fires out and to service them when we do emergency medical. So when we show up on scene of, a, of any kind of an emergency, not only are we trying to be empathetic and make sure that we treat our citizens well and that, they, uh, that we know that they know we're empathetic, but we also want to do it the best way we can professionally. In order to do that, we need to be properly trained. So we, we pay a lot of attention to the training aspects. As far as the services that we provide in the city, we have uh, fire prevention. And what fire prevention is, some people call that the fire marshal's office. The fire marshal's office does things like do, doing plans reviews to make sure that for new businesses that come in, that we have proper fire lanes, proper uh, places for people to exit buildings so that they're safe and they can get out of a building in case there is a fire. Uh, we also work with the schools <coughs> and we try to do public education. Uh, we do public education. We make sure that we uh, let the children know things that you're probably That's familiar good. with, like stop, drop, and roll, uh, exit homes in the fire drills so that they <coughs> can practice the, the fire drills, uh, getting out of their houses. And of course, one of the most important things is having smoke alarms in your homes. So if you don't have a smoke alarm, make sure that you get one because that's one of the things, one of the very basic things that you can do to uh, save your life. Um, in fire prevention, we also do investigations. So if we have arson fires, uh, our Fire Prevention Bureau takes care of investigations to uh, handle any kind of an arson situation. Um, and then we do, uh, we do inspections. So we go out and we do inspections in businesses to make sure they don't have fire hazards. So that's uh, the ways that we prevent fire. Mm -hmm. uh, another service, of course, is emergency medical. And we just got a award from Seton Medical Center of being the gold award with cardiac care. What that means is we provide uh, the very highest standard of cardiac care prior to the uh, prior to a patient getting to the hospital. We actually prepare the patients uh, the best we can. We give them the best the best care they can, so that when they get to the hospital, they actually have the highest probability of of not only surviving but also having a good quality of life after the fact. And then, of course, we put fires out, which is one of our, that's what we would be called as our primary duty, as well as the, the EMS, or the Emergency Medical Service. And uh, of course our objective there is, uh, of course, saving lives. If, if we have to come up and there's someone trapped in a building, we try to get in there and get them out as quickly as possible. And uh, along with saving lives is protecting property. So if we have the ability to protect property uh, and and uh, not do as not do do as little property damage as possible. We try to make sure that we do that. Um, <clears throat> but one of the main things I wanted to talk about was our diversity inside of our department. Uh -huh. And um, we have a fire academy, and so we try to create an environment that's as diverse as possible. We have two fire academies. One is the Killeen Independent School District Academy, which is uh, working through the, the the school district as a vocational program, so that when 
uh, kids get out of high school, if they go through the program, they come out as a certified firefighter in the state of Texas. And that's been the most uh, successful program we've had with increasing our diversity because it makes our department look very much like the community that we're serving. That's good. But we also want to make sure that if anyone's interested in being firefighters, we have a, a citizen's uh, uh, academy and we want females and, and uh, all, all diversity to come and apply for the, for the fire department and come through our academy so that we can expand the diversity in the fire department. A few other things I didn't mention was we do vehicle extractions when people get into wrecks. Uh, we do wildland, uh, which means if there's an interface between uh, urban interface where houses are being built near uh, fields and trees and things that might catch on mm -hmm. fire, we try to make sure we put those fires out properly. And then we also do swift water rescue. Uh, we actually recently saved some people's lives in some creeks and streams that had overflown in the last couple of years. And I mean, they literally would not be alive today had we not have provided that service. Mm -hmm. And even things like vertical rescue, if someone was to get trapped, trapped while they're working up on a water tower or something like that, we provide that service as well. Um, as far as the fire department as a whole goes, um, we have a very bright uh, future for the clean fire department. And, uh, and we try to make sure we have our people that are uh, the best trained that we can possibly have them. And by doing that, we go through the Texas Commission on Fire Protection. And the Texas Commission on Fire Protection certifies our personnel and codifies all the certifications that, 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 uh, that we end up with. And this helps us provide guidelines uh, and, uh, and targets for us to, to get the best training we can for the people. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention is the growth and the expansion of the city. Um, we want to make sure we uh, look to see which direction the city's growing, okay. which direction the population growth is in, and where the businesses are located so that we can determine where we're going to place fire stations and the timing of where those fire stations need to go in. Of course, fire stations cost money, and the extra people that we hire to, to work in those fire stations cost money, so it has to be balanced financially as, with regard to good stewardship for the citizens' financial budget. Uh, we do have need in the future for more fire stations down the road. We uh, actually have plans for fire station 10, station, and, uh, station 10, station 11, and station 12. Now that doesn't mean they'll be built immediately. That means their future plans okay. in the parts of the town that are actually expanding. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll look at the timing that we need to place those stations in and make sure we can afford to pay for those things as being good stewards for the citizens and then we will build those stations when they're needed in those areas. But we kind of know where they need to go already, so we've planned for that. Um, and I wanted to make sure that we gave a kind of a well-rounded uh, description of what our department does for the citizens. And I wanted to thank you today for allowing me to be here to talk about the Killeen Fire Department. You're welcome, mm -hmm. you're welcome. Well, mm -hmm. we have a lot of information, we needed that. Mm -hmm. because a lot of people, they don't know what's going on. We know that we have the fire department, we hear, the, you know, when they go into the action, but mm -hmm. we don't know everything that you have said, especially mm -hmm. me, I didn't know that. So it's very interesting. So I thank you for mm -hmm. being my guest, and thank you for right. the, all the good information that we have. I know that the public, everybody that watching this, they're going to be very happy because they were kind of blind. Mm -hmm. If you don't know that, it's like you're blind. You don't know what's That's going right. on. So thank mm -hmm. you so thank much. You. Thank uh, you for your welcome. time. Uh, thank you so much, the, my view. It is very important for you to listen what he was saying because we need to know and we need to support them, not only by hear what he's saying, but also through prayer and supplication to the Lord because their life is in danger a lot of time. And we just pray that as they go and you hear the alarm that is going on to, into your street, street or your, around your house and area, beginning to pray for them because they need that. They need the support of God to help them. To, to bring people to salvation, like he was saying, saving a lot of people, mm -hmm. the life of a lot of people. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You. And uh, like I say again, God bless you and continue to give you such a wonderful work. Thank you, appreciate it. It's the Word of Life. Welcome to the Word of Life. Once again with you, Mixie Gibson. And as uh, I just finished the interview, the chief of the fire department, Brian Brank, I just was so pleased for the information that he has. He has a great information that we needed to know. And not only that, but uh, I would like for the people, the city of Killeen, all the 
the places that watch this program to continue to pray for them because they are saving life. But you know what? They're exposing their life too. I didn't know anything. I wanted to ask that, but I said, no, I better don't touch that point. But uh, I'm pretty sure that they have a problem also, you know, because when they try to save somebody, they can be hurt too. So we, we need to pray for them. They need to the protection of God when they're going to work. This is a very rough life work. So my program today is going to be talk. We're going to continue concerning the rationness of God of Christ. We are being receiving the blessings, I mean, assurance that God is for us and not against us. And because he promised Jesus Christ came and saved us, now we have the privilege to be not only sons and daughters of God, but we have the privilege to receive everything that God promised to Abraham. He said to Abraham, your prosperity, your posterity will receive the blessing and inherit the whole world. So we are, those who have received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, we are part of Abraham's family. And the problem that we have sometimes that because we don't know what Abraham participated in concerning our life, we don't claim what belongs to us. But I want you to know that when God said to him, he promised to Abraham that his posterity should inherit the world. He didn't say that we will inherit it because we're going to do it through, because we are a special people. No, through faith. He said, through faith, they're going to receive it. They are going to obtain everything that they have, that, that are offered to you, but it has to be through faith. Not by the law, but through faith. So I'm going to be reading in Isaiah 26, the way that, that, so you have more knowledge of what the Lord was saying in the Old Testament, which we now living in the New Testament. It's exactly almost parallel. And then I'm uh, going to be reading in chapter 26, the ver uh, Isaiah 26, verse 1. And... Um, Open the gates that in compromisible ratios will keep their faith and they throw, they are not only keeping the faith, but he said, they are in unity with God. I'm just going to say this myself right now. You know, when I am praying, when I am standing in the before God, I always say, thank you, God, because through Christ Jesus, we have become not only to have great faith, but we have the the blessing to know that through Christ Jesus we have become the righteous one of God in Christ. So over here it says, open the gate that in compromisible righteous. We are those righteous. We are the righteous one of God in Christ. Keep the faith, the who, those who keep the faith, and the, through God him, himself by entering into it. You will guard us. I'm going to be make it personal, okay? Over here it says, you will guard me and keep me in perfect and constant peace. But that is not me only. I'm going to read it exactly that what the Bible says. You will guard him and keep him in perfect, constant peace, who minds both in inclination and in character. Stay on you because the committing themselves to you and leaning themselves to you, hoping in you and confidently trusting in you. So you see, he wants. This is the Old Testament, and I have uh, uh, verses in the New Testament that say the same thing, almost similar. He said, open the gates, open the gates that in compromise that you're walking. When God said he's going to open the gate for us to enter into it, in the, in the other way that we can say that, because God, my Father, through Christ Jesus, has blessed me. And because Jesus is the righteous one of God in Christ, and he has made me righteous, now I am the incompromisible righteous. And I enter into the presence of God, and I want to worship him, and I want to manifest, manifest his glorious name, excuse me, his glorious name. But you know, sometimes when we come to the presence of God, we just want to pray. No, no. I think that the best thing to do is talk to him through worship and praise. I like to come to him and worship him, praise him for all the things that he has done, for the things that I don't even know he's going to do. And then I enter through prayers. Because remember, he is God. He is God. And because he is God, we have to give it honor. We have to honor him. Not just come to him and say, I want this, I want this, I want that. No, no, no. You have to honor him. Uh, uh, worship him and let him know that you are faithful and grateful because 
He has made you part of his life. He's your father. Jesus is your Lord. But we have become his sons and daughters. And as a sons and daughter, sons and daughters, we need to be grateful. We don't take God Almighty for granted. That is not good. And in verse 7 said, The way of these consistently righteous, those living in moral and spiritual rectitude in every area relationship of their life is a level of strain. So what he's trying to say over here once again, we are the righteous one of God in Christ, but we sometimes don't live according to God's principle. Remember God said, I be holy because I am holy. And when he said, be holy because I am holy, this represents over here, this verse, they say, the way of the consistently righteous, those living in moral and spiritual rectitude, moral, spiritual rectitude. In other words, you are a new creation. The, the life that you lived before is not to be living again because you are representing not only God, your father, and Jesus Christ of gratitude because he's savior, but you need to represent yourself as a son and daughter of God, walking in integrity of heart, walking honest life, no lie, no deceiving other, no living the, uh, in the way that you did before. For example, smoking, drinking, doing all these things. I mean, we have to change the way of life. We are now a children of God and we need to represent him the way he wants us to do it. He didn't say it for you that you can do everything you want. Yes, he said you can do everything you want, but all the ways not to what you was doing in the past when you were not saved. You have to now live in the way that God wants us to do, to represent him as a son and daughter, the integrity of heart, a people that have respect for him, because if you walk in rectitude, you honor him. You honor him. And that's what we need to remember, that we are in this earth, and we are living the life that he has given us so freely to represent him in every area of life, in every way. So he continued to say now in verse uh, 7, I continue to say, O oh Lord, you who are upright and direct upright and make level the path, the uncompromising ratios. You see, God is right, God is a ratios God. And he said that he make a, the, a pathway level. In other words, he wanted to continue to walk the way he created us to be before Adam and Eve sin. We don't have to live now the way that we were living before. We commit ourselves to Jesus. We receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We have to now to see that he's, he is even going to the way to, to, to direct us, to guide us, to, to let us know how is the right way to walk, not to the left, not to the right. Now, in verse 12, he said, Lord, you will uh, ordain. Listen to this, when we walk in integrity of heart, when we walk and according to God's principle, this is the benefit that we are going to receive. He said, the Lord will ordain you, God himself ordain peace, favor, blessing, both ways, temporal, not only, but he said, spiritually, physically. And that's what we need. We need to be living by everything that God has given us. Once you know that you have a living according to him, God gonna bless you and bless us abundantly. Because, I mean, he's a God to have everything and he wants us to have everything. Don't, you, you don't think that because you're here, you can have everything. That's the reason that he said, don't, let me tell you this. If you feel like when you go to heaven, when we, it's time for, us, for you to die, go to heaven, you're gonna have everything. You'll be surprised that the guy's going to say, how could you not receive everything that I give you in the earth? You know how many gifts in the earth is for each one of us? And we don't receive it because we don't know how to obtain it. And if we know how to obtain it, we're not walking the way he wants us to walk. Because living in sin, living in sin is impossible for us to receive what God has for us. Lie, deception, you know, anger that, that you just don't want to forgive other people for whatever they have done to you. Unforgiveness is very, very dangerous. All those things deprive us to walk with him, deprive us to receive his blessing, and deprive us to show who we are, how to represent him in this earth. I myself want to be sure that wherever I go, because not because I'm a minister, 
I, I don't even need to say that I'm a minister. I don't want that because title is nothing to me. What I want people to see is the way I'm walking, if they knew me before, they knew what I was, how I was walking before. I wanted to know how I walk now. I want to represent my Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the way that it is prepared for me to give glory to God, glory to Jesus, and glory to the Holy Spirit. So we over here continue to say, verse 13, O oh Lord, our God, O oh the master beside you has ruled over us. O oh the master. What is that? The way you were living before. If you were drinking, you were alcoholic, or you were taking drugs, or you were a prostitute, all the things. You know, God has said a lot of people in that matter, prostitute, alcohol, thief. I mean, God has, that's the reason that Jesus died, because he knew where we were before. And he wants to give her a new life, new beginning. And the new beginning, you receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. You don't have to steal anymore. You don't have to become a drunkard. You don't have to push to drug or take drugs. That is the past, the past. You want the present, and the present is very rich for each one of us that are obedient. Obedient is what God looking for us, obedient. Because if you're not obedient, how could you going to receive something that God has given us freely when we are not representing him correctly. You know, Satan is accusing us all the time if we don't do anything that God wants us to do. God can, Satan can accuse us. You, how can you give her something when she's still living in sin? How can you, I mean, that's just accusation, and it's true. We sometimes bound the hand of God and the blessing of God because we are not obedient. Remember, the past is over. The past that you live, the, the life that you have before is over. Now we are in a new way of living. Integrity of heart, obedient to God. Represent him and if you have a person that, if you have quarreling with somebody else, don't hold any grudge. Just forgive and forget. Let go and let go. Verse 14. Uh, when he said that, verse 13, I'm going to read again. Oh, Lord, all the masters, beside you have rule over us, but we will acknowledge and mention in your name only. In other words, whatever you were in the past, you don't want to remember that. You're going to mention the name of God only. How are you going to mention the name of God daily? Testifying, walking, speaking, hearing, all the things. What, what, where you go, what you hear, what? Watching program television. What kind of program you watching? Something that is going to benefit your soul or something that is just perverted because majority thing now in television is just killing, destroying, and all those things. No, you need to put yourself in a place that your spirit is going to receive what is right, what is right for you. That's what he said, all oh, the must, master have ruled us before. But the master that it was when you were not a Christian, you have not been born again, you don't need to be that kind of life. Verse 14 said, the, the former titan or the former master that was controlling our life, they are dead. In other words, I die, they die. Satan had no control over me. The thing that I was doing in the past, if I was doing something terrible, Satan has no control over me, over you, for anything that you did in the past. This is a new life. You are a new creation. New creation. The new creation people live according to the will of God. God, it is God that loves us. God never changed. God never changed, but he wants us to change. God wants us to change continuously and represent him in good, ma good manner. So when people see you and they hear you talking or they see you how you live, they know she's different, he's different. I knew them before, but, but it's something different. It looks good and it's, it sounds good. That's what we need to witness to him, what we are doing now for him. And continue to say in verse 14, therefore you have visited us and made, us, and made an end of the past. You have made an end of the past. When you receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, you say, by past, welcome, present, future. That's what we need to do. In Psalm, I'm going to be reading quick, really quick in Psalm 24, because that is something that is very important for us to know also. 
You have to start living the way you lived before. You have to start walking and living in the way that righteous man and woman. You are not the same person you were before. You are a new creation. You are a new creation. In, in Psalm 24, I'm going to be reading, say, the earth is the Lord and the fullness of it, the world and they who dwell in it belongs to him also. For he has found it. Not only he found it, but he, he found it upon the sea and he established the sea, he established the current, he established the river. Who shall go into the mountain of the Lord? Or God, who will go into the mountain of the Lord? Who's going to go to stand press, you know, face to face with God? When you stand before God, you know he's in heaven, but you are his child. And you can face him. You can know that he is alive because you are connected with him. If you want to have a better life, connect yourself with God, let the past go, and begin to live your present and the future. Present. The present is very important. Don't deprive your future of the good thing that God has for you because you want to live in between the past and the present. No, the past is over. You're going to live the present and what God has prepared for you for the future. I'm going to ask you, if you have not received Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, I want you to say this, this prayer with me. I am a sinner. I know that I have done wrong. And I know that Jesus died. So we sinners will become a better to receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So I declare now that Jesus is my Lord, that Jesus has forgiven me my sin, that I am a child of God, and I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, now that I can say, Father, help me to live a better life. Help me to, be, help me to live not only the life that you want me to live, but to make possible for me to accept it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have any prayer requests, please call me. The telephone is 254-289-6600. Please, we need to get in agreement. And also, I want you to know, if you watch this program and you like what the Lord is teaching you, you can also help me by sending a gift, financial gift, to help the, not only the ministry, but to help KPLE. Because what you send me, what you give me, is not going to be for me. I'm going to give it to them. So you like the program, you watch the program, allow God to help you in finances toward me for them. God bless you. May the Lord be with you today and forever. It's the Word of Life. The Word of Life with Reverend Mitzi Gibson is made possible in part by Grace Christian Center, Margaret's Beauty Salon, Tolly's AC and Refrigeration, and Harold and Elsie Broussard.